Thank you for being here this evening and um, welcome to our 38th Assembly District listening session. I'm honored here to be here uh, in Lake Mills this evening um, to update the citizens on um, our budget session. And I start out these um, listening sessions by kind of walking people through what the budget process is um, because I think there are a lot of assumptions and people don't necessarily understand how we form our state budget. Um, so it's instructive to go through the actual process. So a little background. Wisconsin has what's called a biennial budget. So it is formed every two years. And it's um, the, the year after we've had our elections. So this is the budget year. And um, the process actually starts in the fall prior to the election when we have the various administrative departments submit their big, bold budget requests. And they aim high for, for what they're looking for to get in their dream budget in their departments. Okay? And they submit it to the governor's office, and then the governor formulates his budget off of those requests, and he has a bicameral um, address in the chambers of the assembly every year, which he did this year, and gives his budget ad address, kind of giving his big, bold um, dream budget to this um, joint session of the legislature. Now, Wisconsin is not like the federal government. We can't print money, and by law, we have to balance our budget. So those big, bold things that are in a budget um, don't make it to the finish line, traditionally. And I'm going to say here in Lake Mills what I've said at my other sessions, no governor, no matter what political party they are, gets everything they ask for in a budget. Scott Walker didn't, Tony Evers doesn't, party doesn't matter. We have to live within our means and we have to come to a consensus between the executive branch and the legislative branch on what we can afford to do and what we need to do for a budget session. So, Here's how it kind of goes, and um, people have asked where we're at in the, um, this kind of flow chart I'm showing here of what happens. As I said, the uh, governor presents his budget. Then it goes to the legislature's Joint Committee on Finance. And really, prior to that, the Legislative Fiscal Bureau, which is nonpartisan office, um, goes through the budget and kind of breaks it down and explains it to the legislature in further ways. Um, this year's budget was, um, or this biennium's budget, I should say, was I think like 350 pages more than the last budget was. So it was thousands of pages. Um, once it goes to the Joint Committee on finance. Then um, public hearings are held, much like I'm holding this one, but the Joint Finance Committee itself has public hearings. Right now in the process, you will see that they are having um, administrative sessions where different departments come in and make their budget presentation. Um, this week we had the Department of Public Instruction, we had the DNR, we had the Public Service Commission, we had Department of Workforce Development, and other departments um, today um, testifying on their budget needs and what they've been doing with the money from the last biennial budget. Um, tomorrow, the Joint Committee on Finance will start their budget road show, and I will be down in Whitewater for any constituents who want to be there. Um, and they will hold a listening session there on the campus of UW-Whitewater. And that's what they do. They make stops around the state. They are fewer this biennium because of COVID-19, and a lot of people are watching virtually. Um, 
but they are being held. So you can watch virtually, you can attend in person, and um, things are kept safe in these listening sessions um, with masking and distancing, I believe. So um, also, you will find my, my office will do this as well, is spring surveys are sent out to constituents to see where are you at, what, what are budget priorities to you, what matters to you in the district, and how would you like to see our tax dollars spent. Um, so once that goes through the Joint Committee on Finance, then they come up with a recommended budget that um, really has kind of comes to a crossroad with the executive branch. And they present it to the legislature. And they work to pass a budget through the legislature. Then it goes to the executive. Um, back to the governor. And as you know, in the state of Wisconsin, you can line, line item veto things. Now, we have uh, prohibitions in the state to things like the Vanna White veto, where you can cross out a letter or rearrange words in a sentence to create different meaning. You can't do that. But numbers can be struck out, sections can be struck out, anything that has an appropriation to it is subject to a line item veto in the state of Wisconsin. Um, so if the legislature doesn't like it, they can try and do, do a veto override. Um, otherwise, uh, it stands as signed by the governor. And that's how we proceed. So let's talk about what makes up our budget, because a lot of people don't necessarily understand that. And let's talk about um, revenue, how, how we get money to form Wisconsin's budget. Um, the lion's share comes from individual income tax and our sales and use taxes. Um, the next largest portion is your corporate income and franchise taxes, and then a number of small taxes beyond that. Um, state dollars are collected through a, a, a wide variety of means, as you see. Um, and federal dollars um, come to us, too, to make up the bulk of what our state spends each year. Be clear that your property taxes are a, predominantly a local tax um, and not tied into the state budget. Where is it spent? Um, the vast majority of our state budget over 43% is spent on education, both um, K through 12 education and our universities. The next goes to our human relations and resources, um, shared revenue, and other such um, allocations. Um, programs like the state transportation spending largely come from what we call segregated funds. So this is what's known as uh, really GPR, or your, your, uh, or your general uh, revenue spending. So um, that's how it basically shakes out. This year is especially challenging with our state budget because of all the federal dollars coming in from COVID relief. Okay, we are still trying to verify that all the CARES Act dollars that have come into the state of Wisconsin have been spent. And when the federal governments um, sent these dollars, they, they really kicked them to the states without kicking them uh, procedurally to the legislatures as they should have, um, because legislatures have the power of the purse. Um, so, the CARES Act dollars that have come in have really fallen under one person to allocate, and that's the governor so far. And we're really trying to work with him on this simply because the higher up you get in government, I would tell you the further you're away from the citizens. And so you, you aren't necessarily hearing as closely or seeing as closely, what's going on in these districts? What are the needs? What are the concerns? Where, where's the, the crisis um, that needs the attention? So um, 
it really is making the budget uh, process this time around a bit more complicated, I would say. Um, and these are one-time or two-time or three-time dollars, huge pots of money that have to be kept separate from a state budget. Okay, you can't make a you can't make long-term decisions on short-term dollars you're getting. So it really has um, made some really complex situations right now. So K through 12 education has gotten a huge um, portion of the money, higher education. And, and you can see we have a whole breakdown. Um, there have been a number of, you're all familiar with the PPP loans. Um, a huge portion has come to, to the state in that. Um, unemployment assistance and, and things of this nature. So if you want a further breakdown, you can always contact my office. But um, suffice it to say that it's been really um, challenging to see where things are going. Um, I, if you may have seen this week um, hitting the news, the Joint Committee on Finance uh, discovered this week that um, the school dollars that are coming into Wisconsin, some school districts are getting over $10,000 per student in aid, and some are getting only hundreds of dollars per student in aids. And I hate to say it, but Lake Mills is the type of area that's getting far less in aid than a Milwaukee that's getting tens of thousands of dollars per student in aid. So um, we're a little concerned about that. Um, because the students out here need help as well, and not at such a disproportionate level as the kids in Milwaukee. Plus, um, the, the Republican legislature really feels that school districts, and I will say Lake Mills um, has done really um, remarkable. Dr. Olson, I, I've commended her um, at, at keeping your students in school to the best of your ability because we know that in-person learning is best for the kids education it's best for their mental health and um, you know it's what your tax dollars are going for is educating the children so um, that's really what the Republican legislature would like to see more of and but that's apart from the budget okay so taxes uh, over the years um, under Republican leadership, we've been able to really cut taxes. Wisconsin has been known as really a, a tax cut or a, or a tax, um, heavily tax burdened state. And all you have to do is talk to friends who, who live down south and you're like, wow, you pay that little in taxes. It's shocking. Um, but, you know, you look at how much it's decreased and that yet with the responsible spending, um, and those cuts, we've still been able to increase revenue in the state, and we're in a position of um, fiscal health. My concern is in the um, budget that the governor has submitted over a billion um, in um, tax increases and um, as well as spending have been recommended. And that's of huge concern. Um, I don't want to see your taxes go up, especially at a time where, you know, this has been a, a, a tough year with 2020 behind us. I, I, I think all of us would do better with more money in our own pocket. And when you have more money in your own pocket, you're going to do the things that you, your family wants and needs to do. And you're actually going to create a taxable event so the revenue is actually increased when we, when we take it easier on the citizens. Next. So here are the, the, the concerns with the, the budget submitted by the governor. You know, last biennium, he, he had an increase of almost double in his, his intended spending, um, going from the, the previous biennium's 3.1% percent increase in spending to five and a half percent increase in spending over the last biennium 
this year's ask is close to 10% increase over his last ask. So, you know, that's, that's a concern. Um, I think we can spend wisely and live within our means. Um, so, it, the, the other concern to me is that there are public policy issues that Governor Evers put into the budget, and that's not the place for um, putting public policy issues. It's for budgeting issues. Uh, um, I make no apologies, and I know many of you don't agree with me, but I, I am not in favor of legalizing marijuana. And um, I can explain um, at length why I'm not. And it's because I care about you, and I care about your safety, and I care about our kids, and I care about our communities. Um, that being said, he's got it written into the budget. Act 10. I know several constituents don't agree with that. He wanted to repeal that in the budget. That's not the place for it. If you want to repeal it, do it outside the budget. Um, other things, um, hiring new employees, um, expanding uh, welfare benefits, all of those things are public policy issues, and they really will be taken out of the budget because that's not the place for them. So now we go um, to a point where we really budget within our means. And like I said, we have, um, <laughs> it's been nothing short of a miracle, really, um, coming out of 2020. I've spoken to so many of you by phone over this past year. Um, because that's what I do. And honestly, um, sitting down and making those hours worth of calls, I think is so important because w when would you expect to hear from me when we're in a crisis like COVID and everybody's home and businesses are closed down and so forth. And uh, listen, I, I fully expected, folks, that we would be in a complete economic crash by the fall. Um, because things were so horrible last spring at this time. I mean, who could have even imagined that businesses could still function um, with having doors shut? How were any of us going to provide for ourselves if we didn't have jobs to go to? It was a scary time. And yet, because of Wisconsin's fiscal responsibility, we have fared much better than most other states. Um, and we still have our rainy day fund intact. We did not, you have to legislatively um, take action to tap into those rainy day funds. We didn't have to do that, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that's, that's pretty miraculous. So that's still intact. We're still um, in good shape fiscally. Um, so we can do some good things. I'll give you, for, for instance, I think that, um, for those of you who missed our press conference about um, having some of these big, bold visions for what we would like to see done with the latest um, American uh, Relief um, Plan Act, it's called, ARPA, um, dollars that came to the state, and budget dollars too, is to m maybe really address some of these areas that COVID hit the, the hardest. Um, for me, I, I think long-term care is a huge issue. Broadband is a huge issue. Um, our, our unemployment is a huge issue. Um, and those are all things that we can use the federal aid dollars for, but we can also look to be responsible in our budgeting for. So those are the types of things um, Rural broadband, boy, I've talked to so many of you out in the Lake Mills area. Um, even when I was campaigning and knocking on doors going, isn't it funny how you don't have to get very far out, outside of a, a metropolitan city to have your broadband not be so great? And when you're trying to educate a child from home or maybe have a Zoom meeting for work, um, not having that great digital broadband is extremely problematic in trying to function in your daily life. So the legislature is very on board with that, and we want to work with the governor on many, many of these things. So that's kind of where we go to next. Um, we want to make sure your voice is heard, 
And so when you get those spring surveys, please complete them and send them back to my office. Feel free to contact the office with questions you have about the budget. And if you want to go to the um, Joint Finance Committee public hearings, um, I have a post on the what they call the JFC Roadshow. Um, go to UW-Whitewater on Friday or go to some of these other spots and feel free to make your voice heard. Um, but that's kind of, kind of my presentation on the budget this evening. Are there questions I can answer? That, that is a great question, and the question for those who didn't hear was on um, how we fund the Rainy Day Fund. And pretty much what we've done is vote to designate surpluses to, to that Rainy Day Fund. If you look at it historically, um, a decade ago, it was like negative territory, okay? And that makes a state fiscally really, really vulnerable at times like this. And honestly, I think that probably every legislator who serves all of us, no matter what your party, would guess that that rainy day fund would have been empty at the end of 2020 because of what was happening. But it's not. Um, because, and it's, it's good that it's not because, say, we're not as fortunate with the next crisis that hits the state, like COVID-19. Um, you want it there to make sure um, our state isn't imploding, that we can make good on our promise of our public benefits and whatnot, um, and, and really live up to our responsibilities as a state. That is a great question, and I would have to get an individual breakdown um, for you on that. So feel free. That the question was how how that portion of the state budget is um, broken down even further. Um, and you, citizens can reach out to my office, rep, R-E-P dot D-I-T-T-R-I-C-H, no E's, at legis.wisconsin.gov. So rep.dietrich at legis.wisconsin.gov and um, just email me and we'll get you the breakdown on those numbers or any other numbers you want. I know there are also concerns about um, roads as there have been, there were the last biennium. Um, and I get a lot of questions about uh, specific projects this time around, and I go to bat for this district. I do. Um, I will tell citizens it's very hard to um, get particular asks pushed through with the budget. Traditionally, um, a number of these things are, are funded through grant programs or where you fall in the pecking order with a given department. So um, you can always contact my office with concerns, and I certainly go to bat for the constituents on that. Um, I don't always get what I ask for. Did you have any others? OK. All right, any uh, online questions? All right. Well, gosh, that was awfully short, um, but good questions. And um, I'm always happy to talk to constituents. Um, so feel free to contact my office. Um, I will tell you right here and now, I don't think online is the place to discuss policy issues because things never get solved on social media or online. Um, it's not a healthy place in my mind to discuss things because things get misunderstood or taken out of context. So please call or email my office and I will be glad to reach out. And I'm so honored to serve you all and um, glad to have this opportunity to give you a little presentation on our state budget. Thanks.